Okay, good morning. Welcome, everyone. I am Alini Timal. I am the Senior Technical Officer at the CADRIM Center of Excellence. And we are going to discuss today Community Disaster Response Team. Um, we're looking at understanding how this approach is used and showcasing some of the tools that you can use within your national societies, within your communities to build their resilience. Um, here's what some of the things we're going to look at. The webinar will go through the approach, um, how CDRTs can focus on preparedness. We will walk through some of the materials and equipment that they may use. This is housed within documents on our website, which we created for this specific purpose and approach. And then we will discuss methods of engaging persons, especially during um, the COVID-19 recovery and response activities that we're doing in communities. And I'll take you through a demo of how we are in re-envisioning modules that are used for classrooms and looking at a more distance learning approach. So let's get started and thank you for joining. So what is a community disaster response team or CDRT and how did it all began? This is really an approach that the IFRC adopted to ensure that we are building resilient communities and kind of cutting or negating that dependency syndrome on of communities and ensuring that they could manage emergencies on their own. But in order to do this, they need the necessary skill sets to be able to provide and become more resilient. They need knowledge, they need the tools, they need to know that if an emergency happens, within their community, they are best placed to actually show up and not do any harm to themselves, but provide assistance to other community members in the safest way possible. So we're going to basically look at some of the tools that the Reference Center has been updating and it was necessary for the Reference Center to have what is called a technical advisory group. And we have been going through some of the materials and making sure that it's updated, that it, meet, it meets the standards of the SPHERE guidelines, and that it has also included in it protection, gender, and inclusion education. And for this reason, some of the presentations that we have used before when engaging communities were seen as outdated. Um, they were not that appealing to look at, so we had our reference center graphics person also update the look and feel of the modules. And we had a range of technical experts from different national societies, different reference centers, and persons are part of our volunteer teams as well to come on board mm -hmm. and look at the materials and share what they felt should be there for community members. Um, as we go on, these guidelines will be available to you on our website, um, specifically community response teams. That document is a minimum standard guide that looks at the CDRT approach and the CERT approach, which is community emergency response teams. Um, there are two different teams, and some of you may know they operate within the same sphere, the same landscape. If an emergency happens, um, sometimes because there are two response teams, it's hard to coordinate that response. So this document is a very good guideline on how much CDRTs know, how much CERTs know, who is certified to do what, how they coordinate within the same landscape. 
and it also gives guidelines into the types of equipment a minimum team should have if they were act to act as a response team. So some of the previous modules we would have gone through um, would have been basic modules that really spoke to CDRTs and very disaster centric. Um, on my right, to the right of the screen, you would see how we updated these modules indicated by the yellow fonts. And we introduced through the tag methodology um, new modules such as Unit 6, Health and Emergencies, Unit 8, Communications. And we noticed that even though you as national societies, as persons in disaster risk management, reaching out to communities, you have a fair idea of how to engage communities, but this is not always so with every individual. So we have added some basic guidelines on how you can engage community members, how you can ensure that whatever services you're bringing to the community, you're asking for feedback on those services and ensuring that you adapt your services to tailor the community's needs. Um, a case study recently in Dominica and their CDRTs, we have recognized that what really made the response effective and efficient from their response with Hurricane Irma and Hurricane Maria was basically knowing the CDRT's rules and structure. In a time of emergency, there's no time to second guess who is doing what, what is this person's contact number, where are the keys for the storage relief equipment. So it's very good to outline this to community members who would like to become CDRTs. And for them to have these engagements and no rules and responsibilities clearly before the event happens. Um, there's a reason why I'm going backwards and working my way up to unit one, um, specifically because it was identified that CDRTs were only, because of their title, taken a very response centric view of responding to events. And it's important to, for them to learn that disaster management contains not just response, but it's heavily dependent upon how much you prepare. So we divided um, this concept and ensured that CDRTs had more information on how they could become better disaster risk management officiators and practitioners to be able to engage with response agencies appropriately. And in that unit one, we highlighted what the difference is between a hazard and a disaster. Uh, this is our conceptualization of how hazards are interconnected. And we produced this hazard wheel to just show the different categorizations of hazards. They can be either seismic, hydrometeorological, biological, environmental, social, economic, etc. But what distinguishes a hazard from a disaster? We know um, in our daily lives, anything with a negative connotation or anything bringing us stress, people often say, oh my gosh, that is such a disaster. Um, and it's it's fine for our daily communication with persons that that's OK. But when you have persons liaison with response and first responder agencies and in, in an emergency situation, you want them to be able to define the differences and use the proper terminology. And in an effort to just ensure that community members understood this, um, we use the wheel to basically break down the terms. And a hazard is anything that can cause loss of life, loss of property, et cetera, and bring some kind of economic loss. And how does it transform into a disaster is when 
that the same impact causes loss of life, loss of property, loss of your livelihood, maybe, etc. But your community, you as an ind individual, us as a region, we cannot cope. We cannot deal with this hazard. It's very catastrophic to us. And this is when it transforms from a hazard to a disaster. Um, what is even more important that persons understand the link between the hazard wheel. One primary hazard could actually have a domino effect and cause other secondary hazards to happen. So I'm going to just give you an example. For instance, if we were experiencing earthquakes and heavy aftershocks, that a high magnitude earthquake could actually trigger a tsunami, which can then cause large scale flooding, which increases the amount of vectors and diseases that they spread. So for instance, leptospirosis during flooding, the increase of mosquitoes, Zika, etc. Mm -hmm. And then you will have as a result of the same earthquake, you could have explosions on rigs, oil spills, you can have pollution in the ocean, and generally high magnitude or catastrophic disasters all lead to some form of panic, loss of security, looting, you can lose your economic your loss of livelihood, um, loss of employment, etc. So they're all interlinked and it's important that we understand this and as we transform and share knowledge to the community on the link between the hazards, um, it's important that we do, we prepare the community for this realization. And now we're seeing it because we have the hurricane season coming up we're preparing our communities for the hurricane and rainy season. We're also looking at drought expectation because some countries are facing drought and it's difficult to cope with some of the response and recovery activities for COVID-19, which is a pandemic. So we're having to face dual disasters and this is why it's so important to understand the context of the wheel itself. There are different ways that CDRTs can prepare um, in addition to having the materials to share with your CDRT teams. Um, it's very important for them to understand the entire disaster management cycle and to understand that they're not only in a response mode, but they should be their brother's keeper. They should be using, checking up on vulnerable persons. They should be preparing their homes, their surroundings, making sure no loose materials are outside their homes. They should be sharing this type of mitigative action with other community members. And here are some ways that they can do this by engaging persons out of the normal due to COVID-19, um, some CDRT teams have been actually utilizing the WhatsApp call group. So within their teams, they have been dissecting persons who are in charge of communications, persons who are in charge of stocking up equipment. And they're really utilizing the fact that that platform has now increased from four persons within a group call to eight. Uh, a CDRT team sometime in a small community is five persons. Sometimes in a large community, it could be up to 25 persons. So very dynamic differences and very different groups, depending on what your need is, you can utilize that platform. Uh, CDRTs have also been having Skype meetings to go through clearly roles and responsibilities. And we cannot stress how important this is um, having persons contact information before the emergency, making sure that you know exactly which community center you're pre-positioning relief items in, 
um, making sure that you have the necessary equipment and you have, of course, a financial person on board who may be responsible for buying things in an emergency time. Um, this, is clear, this clearly has to be defined. Then when we look at the use of distance learning platforms and tools, what CDRTs have been doing during this time and we have been encouraging um, because we lack that face to face training classroom type setting. It's um, becoming more popular that they search for um, proper videos that demonstrate sandbagging. They follow it on their own. Um, they look at, they add it to their chat groups and discuss it. Good ways of doing it. They talk about installing hurricane straps, the proper ways to do it. And because of the COVID-19 context as well, a lot of them have been sharing tuto tutorials on how to make cloth masks how to engage persons within the community to support this if they need um, surpasses persons in the community who need access to this. And an interesting thing that has been happening is utilizing neighborhood watch teams. Now, neighborhood watch teams essentially began due to security concerns but CDRTs have adapted that and have used persons within the community that can monitor rising river levels um, to, in, to support and send community alerts to persons who need it. So they would actually contact the person who's responsible for communication on the CDRT team and let that person share that message that, okay, our river levels are rising. We need to ensure that either persons move all their items to higher ground, they evacuate or et cetera. So there are different things being done, even though we have some challenges and constraints on how we interact. Another Thing maybe to be more on the positive side and you all have seen these memes being shared within the COVID context on social media with things that have been cancelled but really highlighting the positivity mm. of things that are not cancelled and this is really what we would like to share and, and see being transmitted to CDRTs and communities on the whole. Um, because as mentioned, you can still have connectivity through WhatsApp platforms, Skype meetings, do your distance learning um, videos. But more importantly, because shelter management is not going to be envisioned as it was before for the upcoming hurricane season based on the impact within the country and the number of cases and social distancing restrictions, um, you will have to really stress the community disaster response teams, the importance of sheltering in place. And regardless of COVID-19, sheltering in place is really the best practice um, before because you do not want to pick your family up and go to a strange location. Um, it's really you don't want to leave your home. You want to have all the supplies that you need at home. Um, it would mean re-envisioning what our national societies, what persons are distributing to communities. Yes, we know at this time person had different um, challenges with getting grocery items, etc. Um, but as we transition into hurricane preparedness mode, it's important for us to look at more canned items, less perishable goods, etc. Then really household preparedness is something we can do while we stay at home. Looking at drains that should be clogged, that are normally clogged when there are heavy rains, looking at loose items around the household that could potentially become missiles if high wind activity um, impacts the community is something that could be done by community members while they're at home. 
and of course check in on vulnerable persons. You will have persons on your street who you know they cannot physically evacuate, evacuate on their own and they would need a caregiver to support them. So these are things that CDRTs can still do in preparation mode. One of the things that you will find in the documents on the website um, is the minimum standards guide, as I said, which really itemizes these items for CDRTs. They have personal response kits, so on their person, they would have a personal grab and go bag um, that they would have their radio, their safety whistles, because remember, we're not just preparing for hurricane season. What if we have a high magnitude mm -hmm. earthquake and we need mm -hmm. to signal someone? We're not going to use our oxygen level or decrease this to call someone for help, but we'll be using our safety whistle, whistles. Um, an important thing there are the reflective vests. So CDRTs are normally visible by their reflective vests, by their ID badges to let first responders know this person is certified in assisting with some sort of response, right? Um, on my right, to the right of the screen, different national societies because they are also partaking in doing distributions for COVID-19, they have added several other equipment items that to their personal kits. So they have added the face shield, the cloth mask, some would like their own rubber boots, gloves, etc. And this by no means, um, you have to stick to the equipment in the guidelines, that's just a minimum. So anything you would like to add, because of your country context, please feel free to add. Similarly, for the community response kits, these are normally put in a community member's vehicle, their home, their storage room, a community center, and it can have a number of items which you would need for response, clearing debris, etc., dealing with roofs that have been blown off. And you would notice that there's a recommended amount of number there for things like cutlasses, garden forks, tarpaulins. And this is really guided by the size of your community. If you only have five community CDRT members, maybe you might only want five shovels, or maybe you may want more because you have a large CDRT team or you have a large community and if 25 homes are impacted, you would need more than 10 tops. So these are things that are can be manipulated and based on your community context. Of course, on my right, persons have added loudspeaker because when there's loss of power, um, cut off of communication, loudspeaker is really the way to get to some of the community members and alert them on a situation. As we move on, CDRTs have also been adapting their personal supplies and making sure that they have hygiene kits. Because of the COVID-19 response, a lot of persons have identified that they need some of these hygiene items to be within their response kits, and this is fine. These items are also just a guide. So if you think that within your country context, something is not appropriate here, or you would like to add something, feel free. Another version of what CDRT response kits are looking like really includes household hygiene items. And because as a CDRT member, you're going to have to make sure that community members understand that yes, there are persons within the community that cannot afford um, basic cleaning equipment, etc. And this would really help if you have this within your community response teams or you stock this within a community center in times for distribution. 
um, when there's heavy flooding, these are some of the items that are also utilized to ensure that the place is sanitized after. Um, this is a good idea to add to your community response kit as well. So we're going to now take a look at the live demo. Um, after the demo, we'll have questions. So I would please ask everyone to stay muted until after the demo, and then we will hear from you live and direct or in the chat if you'd like. Um, so let me please just share my screen. Can one person just indicate if they're seeing my screen? Yes, yeah. Yes, Thank you. So, this is what you will come to, CADRIM's website. And when you go to the training tab, you will see CDRT training. At this point, you can download the sustainability guidelines, the CDRT field guide, which is still a, wo a work in progress because we have, as I mentioned, updated the presentations. So this field guide does not match exactly the amount of presentations that you have access to, but it does guide the kind of activities you can do based on the previous modules that were available for CDRTs. So if you were to go into any one of these presentations, there's also notes within those presentations that can help you transfer this information to a community member in layman's terms. For if for any reason that you don't understand what is in the notes, we are reachable to give that support. And now I'm just going to a live demo to show you some of what the reference center is trying to do in terms of making information available in a different format. So I'm going to play this video. We'll discuss the secrets of risk, but Um, sorry, we can't see the video. We can only see the presentation in the PowerPoint screen. Sorry, can you repeat that? Um, the video does not appear, only the PowerPoint screen. Okay. Thanks for that. Is that Nadia? Yes. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. No problem. Are you seeing the full screen now? No, it's still stuck in the PowerPoint presentation. Okay, so I have to share my, reshare my thing. Okay. I'm sorry, apologies. Just bear with me for one second.
Okay. So did everybody get to see a rundown of the website or was that also on the PowerPoint presentation? We can see the, the website right now. Okay. So this is this would be the platform that you all would see to get all the presentations, the documents, etc. Let's try this video once more. Are you seeing the screen now? Yes. Okay, so That's I'll start. Okay, thank you. So I'll start with the video now. Okay, and that is basically how we envision into transforming some of the information that may be a bit technical to engage communities in a different way. So if we break down some of the terms, some of the things that they need to do um, in a more visual way, um, it's hoped that it would be better interpreted and a more interesting way of engaging persons, especially since um, I think everyone is a bit getting a bit tired of the webinars and the classroom type lecture via presentation. Um, this, this is going to become a burden on some people who are constantly engaged in this way. Um, so this is just one of the ways in which we're trying to transform some of the content within the CDRT package. Um, so this is the end, brings me to the end of my presentation. Um, at this point, if anyone would like to ask any questions, the floor is open to you.